us the first time I ever met him and we were playing all that sorts of stuff and then our singer really wanted us to throw a Volbeat song in the set and we were all young and stupid and we played that song and what are kids? Yeah, and Brian came up. He was like, hey, I'm Brian from Decepticide Stop playing that fucking Volbeat song. He said, okay <laughs> oh, God, I love Brian. It's just like me, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I mean when we were kids we were like, oh, man That guy was a dick, but now You know that I'm older. I look back on it. And I'm like, right. yeah, yeah, he was actually correct <laughs> trying to help us out You know that you fucking play. Yeah. If you were, were you really into that band? No, oh no. What were, why were you playing it? Uh, singer, liked them. Were you not the singer of, what was the name of the band? White Vinyl. It was, I mean, we, we weren't hardly in the, in the scene at all. I mean, we, I was 17. We did do, we just, we played Coots once. We played, we had a gig at Coots once. And uh, we did the Battle of the Bands, the old, we did the last year of, um, Warp Tour battle. Like I said, I was 17 and I was, you know, I wasn't around uh, in the scene when it was big, you know? All I know is kind of this shell <laughs> that, that it is right now, you know? I got, because I was watching um, uh, on yours and uh, Chris's episode, um, you guys were talking about how different the scene was and like you were talking like 2009 i was eight years old and i wasn't playing shit can't find a drummer or a bassist or anything are they are they here in alaska yeah they're just here in anchorage and they freaking found our shit came to one of our all ages shows and you know it's two kids you know I don't know. They, they, the guitarist kid had some videos and he deleted them for whatever reason. Totally, man. I mean, that's um, that's what breeds bands right there. Would you just say, you know, you play in an all ages show, and then the right fucking, um, not the right kid, but you know, kids in the crowd. Like you don't, you don't know like who are you inspired that day, yeah, and what they're gonna become later. You know what, how weird it is to I. Did, I didn't inspire Murat to anything. He was already a musician, uh, yeah, yeah. but he um, he did come to his first show was a going away show for Decepticide back in 2010 when we were moving out of state. And uh, holy shit, man, what a what a great first show for him! Yeah, it was supposed to be our last show in Alaska because we were leaving, yeah. so it was fucking massive, dude. So for him to see us and. Um, we just did a podcast. It comes out on Sunday after after the show um, yeah, right in Palmer. But he talks about that, how he saw the show, and he was like, I got to fucking do that. And, like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be better than those guys. But he didn't, he didn't say it like that. But <laughs> back then, he was, you know, like, he kept talking about how the Decepticide and this other band Corruption, I don't know if you, if you know them or, mm -hmm. like, heard them. Um, we were, like, kind of like the two metal bands, like, head-to-head. -head. Like, yeah. we play a lot of shows. And, you know, this is back, like, 2000 eight through 2011 yeah so us and those guys just like constantly and that's Murat's band no no yeah. that's those are like okay. older metal band they're like Murat so like Murat always admired the two of us and uh yeah. and then he started his band called Terraform started as Destroyer uh turns into Terraform yeah. and uh yeah totally man like uh he could have been great and he's a great musician man he's so cool but um <laughs> yeah no, he's the coolest guy. The freaking nicest guy ever. Yeah, yeah, He's man. the nicest guy in your band, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He is, man. No, some of that shit is going to go over my head because, like I said, when, you know, like you said 2010, dude, I'm telling you, I was 10 years old in 2010. I wasn't playing. Let's start, let's start from there, man. So, were you born and raised here in Alaska? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> I went, so I went how, to. How old are you? 23. You're 23 <laughs> years old. Yeah. I went to. Uh, Diamond High School. My mom went to Diamond High School. Right on. My grandpa went to Diamond High School, dude. I'm like, I went to Diamond. As, you went to Diamond? Yeah. Oh shit. I'm as boring as it could be, but hey. Class, class. Hey, 2005, went, dude. Oh, uh, 2019. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't graduated for four years, but yeah. you know, there's cool Diamond alumni, dude. Yeah. You, me, Brock. <laughs> Brock. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily in that order, I guess. Well, Brock first for sure. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Uh, so Brock, Brock knew my mom. Um, he was good friends with my uncle. So really, yeah. 
So you graduated from Diamond High School. So how yeah. long have you been playing guitar? Were you playing guitar in high school or before that? I was playing guitar in high school. Uh, I started playing pro uh, sixth grade. There was another kid that went to the school. I can uh, confidently admit now. He played guitar. I wanted to. But he actually did it. Uh -huh. And he was really good. And me being jealous of that made me pick it up. <laughs> Yeah, well, a lot of my big steps. Playing. But if you play guitar, you were you obviously into music at the time? Yeah, but I was into a uh, different shit back then. Like, um, I remember watching. This was even before I picked up guitar. Watching Foo Fighters on the TV, dude. That right. was that was my band. Like that was what started it. And I was young. I was ten, eleven years old. Mm -hmm. But that was the band, and obviously it changed and grew from there. Sure, uh, as it should. Um, yeah, that's what I was asking about both feet because, like, all right, so you did that. But yeah, then, yeah. You know, to me, you're like a really, you know, we don't know each other, right? Yeah. I, this Obviously. is pretty much, I, I've said what's up to you at Coots one time. Yeah, this that's, is like that's been the extent of like uh, how much uh, interaction we had, probably just standing next to each other at a concert or something and just say what's up. And um, usually Anthony does all the talk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Anthony is one of my oldest friends nicest dude yeah but yeah man when we're at coots and we're drinking you know some of us kind of quiet down some of us talk more yeah <laughs> no, dude, anthony's the coolest guy yeah i didn't really know anthony till probably last year um i think he came to uh the Sepsa show and uh after that it was one of those nights that i was still f feeling pretty good and i'm like let's go to my house do some karaoke yeah and uh he came over with uh our friend chris yeah um so that was yeah. the first time i, I met him um so what so you started playing guitar like how, how did you come to to that did you ask for your parents did you buy your guitar yourself no or? so i you know i had what everybody had was that little uh three-quarter scale white and black fender strat i had that <laughs> yeah exactly pretty much exactly right there it's a yamaha but like it's, yeah. it's still like was the same quiet. set from like costco and shit yeah exactly <laughs> something like that i think it was the best buy or what when we used to have the guitar center in best buy right um I had that, wanted to learn to play. I learned, you know, how to put my finger on the, you know, my left hand. Started using it, playing one note, whatever. What, what year is this? Uh, 2011, 2012. So I was 11 or 12 years old. Damn. So I met, my grandpa had an old, well, not old at the time. It's old now. I still have it. It was, it was my first real guitar. I consider mm -hmm. it my first guitar. He gave me... Uh, an Ibanez GAX. It was just a Geo. It was a like hundred and twenty nine dollar yeah, yeah. guitar. Totally. Yeah. Played that thing for two years, and then when the Best Buy started closing down, my dad uh, they nicely, had some good deals. Yeah, he were, he bought me. They were closing down, dude. Epiphone Les Paul, just a regular old Sunburst Les Paul. Mm -hmm. I picked up one of off. one of these speakers back then when it was closing down for yeah. like two hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I was still playing through like the little amp, you know. Mm -hmm. But he bought me my you know a real real guitar it was neck through and everything it was my mm -hmm. first les paul and i've varied a little bit but now i've been playing les pauls but yeah uh you know my grandpa gave me my first guitar and i i took lessons with the guy in town uh and where are you playing this time like you're just still playing stuff like foo fighters or, or, or yeah i mean uh, the first stuff that i learned was acdc because you know it's easy you know, I, I think one of the first song that i learned was tnt i remember and i was playing it wrong I just however the dude taught me by ear it mm -hmm. wasn't the way that I, I would play it now you know but obviously the seven nation army the knocking on heaven's yep. door all that shit i did all that yeah um but yeah tnt was the first song and i used to like acdc a lot i've kind of i never liked them dude you know i <laughs> i don't listen to them now right. <laughs> uh, but as a kid you know in sixth grade you know tnt sure. that shit's badass <laughs> uh the only song i've ever liked and i still do is uh hill spells is the only song I like I like by them. I feel like it's like one of those songs that is like so much different from everything they've done. Like it still has a lot of like what they always do, yeah. but it has like a it's that melody. Yeah, dude, it's it's got some it's kind of ominous and like ep it's epic. It's an epic yeah. song. But that's why I uh, there's a couple songs I like uh, for those about to rock. That's like my ACDC song. You know, an my one. Anthem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, maybe as a kid, you know, that was right dad would play that or whatever my dad is i'm the only musician in the family my grandpa plays drums a little bit but i, I a lot of people say this i grew up in a musical family you know mm -hmm. my my family loves appreciates music but musicians in the in family 
no, they say they came from kind of a musical family. My all my family uh-huh. loves music, you know. Well, my dad, yeah, you people know, people love music. <laughs> yeah, people love music, and and you know, understanding it and yeah. playing it is a different thing. But I think in my family, nobody plays. Nobody's a musician, yeah. or nobody that ever did anything else like big or semi big. There's a few that play acoustic, like you know, yeah, when everybody's drunk, yeah, yeah. like they know they know a couple of songs, but. Uh, that's about it. That's kind of how I started. Like somebody, you know, I had guitar classes in back in Colombia, yeah. and um, then I had a cousin that actually knew how to play. And I hand him over my guitar. He was like, "Do you realize that every string on this fucking guitar is out of tune?" I'm like, "I don't know. I just play one string. I just pick one and just like, move it up and down." Yeah. Um, well, yeah. the, the grandpa that gave me my first real guitar, he's he's a drummer. He still plays drums. Um, so, okay, not in a band or anything. Uh, he he's the the one other musician but i mean his favorite band's rush my first concert was rush he took me yeah, oh, that was really? back you That's know sick, it's, dude. it's not the same as it is now where you can go to matt brew every weekend in the summer and see mm-hmm. you know and I, I know that you obviously know this but um, well, that they, was when we had to fly out he sure we flew to see my first concert you know yeah no i mean that's been the thing in alaska always that's not just now that yeah they're having a lot of concerts looks like this year they're actually having real uh yeah uh, original bands as opposed to like last year was it like a shit ton of like tribute bands yeah. which it was cool like we went to see the Aussie tribute band yeah. and they were awesome you know the guitar player was Zach Wild like <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. Uh, the <laughs> the Wish version version of <laughs> Zach Wild <laughs> it's still sick they do fucking shred but it was like yeah. uh, it's kind of cheesy when they try to dress like yeah, we, like the guys we opened up for the Van Halen one Oh yeah, I didn't go to that. How was it? Yeah. Uh, so the pictures uh, look awesome. Well, like you we guys- we opened for it, but then we had a gig at Coots later that evening, so we left. We didn't we didn't get to watch that one. It's kind of a dick move, you know. Wouldn't recommend, but we had to get to another gig. <laughs> We've done well, not to say so there's a band that I had that we had uh, two old ages shows back to back. So we opened one show, and then after that we went and closed at the other one. Yeah. Um, so, but when did you start a band? Did you, how many bands have you been in the past? Uh, this is my second. Uh, I mean, I'm currently in my second real band. You know, I so mean, White Vinyl is your first band? Yeah, yeah, that was my first real band. I was in a band in middle school or whatever, Robot Jellyfish. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we uh, do. We, we, we all had like our little projects. Like, you don't want to call it a band because not really, but it's like, yeah. well, were you playing with your friends and you called yourself something? yeah that was your band <laughs> yeah i think uh my anthony was in one too i had a really funny name but when when where did you meet anthony so uh anthony's a little bit older than me not a lot he's three years older than me um uh when i was a freshman in high school it was the last day of school someone introduced us in the band room i was playing guitar or mm-hmm. whatever and he was graduating and you know he was like, oh, i love molly crew and back then i was big in, in freshman year i was really big into rat <laughs> Mm -hmm. i was into the glam stuff and we just got along instantly started a band white vinyl was just built up of him and i and then some dudes off craigslist that you know we all had long hair and like rock and roll so Uh, obviously we had to start a band and we we did you guys have the worst fucking craigslist ads ever oh yeah i just gotta gotta tell you that dude well (laughs) now that you mention it i remember don't remember exactly word for word but i remember i did take a screenshot and send it to brian i'm like <laughs> look at this fucking douchebags man i'm like well, who, who would join your band with like you better fucking bring him like all right rockstar how many shows well, do you have <laughs> you know? well so what happened so one thing to keep in mind i was like i think when i when we had the ads out i was mm-hmm. i was 16 yeah. so I, I didn't have i couldn't even drive yet and we knew the story like i said we were super into the glam we Uh saw the story of motley Crue's ad saying oh you gotta essentially what you fucking said and and we were like we're motley Crue. we gotta do it and we just did the fucking same ad yeah you're or a variation of it you know and looking back yes that that thank thank you for bringing that up (laughs) well you brought it up and you just remember that i I had seen that because i think at the time i was looking for a project to join as a bass player (laughs) And so I might have seen it, or I think a band that I was in was looking for a guitar player. Anyways, I was for some yeah. reason I was at the cra- in the yeah. Craigslist fucking section, and um, oh, you could have joined White Vinyl with my <laughs> sixteen-year-old me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's funny that you mentioned in your age, and I totally 
when I was that age and I was playing music. Um, yeah, man, I thought uh, I knew I wasn't better than, than everybody, but I felt like I was going to. So yeah. I was writing with that attitude, like I was already better than everybody. Yeah. So if it, doesn't, it didn't matter that you know how to play guitar as well as everybody else. I just knew that once I did, these guys are done. <laughs> like everybody's fucking done because I was obsessed with playing guitar. But online, there was like message boards. Um, and uh, yeah, I would just run my mouth and yeah. I'd be telling people that suck that clearly were better guitar players than me and like have been playing music in front of people for years and I haven't even fucking stepped on stage. Like I stepped out of the battle of the bands and that was it. Yeah. And did, did good for what it was. You know, I was like 18 at the time. It was my senior year in, in high school. And um, I've been rejected by the fucking music club like two years in a row because I didn't really have a band. It was like me and my said brother. Yeah. And then by my senior year, I kind of whined about it. I was like, I'm about to fucking graduate, dude. Let me fucking play this thing. Like who keeps, <laughs> sh- like come on, like who cares? And and then I went with behind their back and I went talk to my guitar teacher, uh, Miss Livingston. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, could you talk to them? <laughs> like, they won't let me play. <laughs> and uh, she was like, well, it's like, it's just you and your brother. And I'm like, no, I'm not even playing with him. Like, yeah, kind of, that's so funny, kind of like you and Anthony. Like, I found a drummer who was like so much younger than me. Yeah. Uh, my parents like moved to uh, Jewel Lake and like around the corner, uh, this kid that was like still in fucking middle school, <laughs> fucking badass drummer, and his dad turns out to be this like amazing musician, and um, his name was Ron, and uh, and end up being like better friends with his dad, obviously, because <laughs> yeah. the kid is like fucking 14, 15, I'm like 18, yeah. and when I'm hanging out in the garage, like I'm just basically hanging out with his dad, and his dad was like fucking huge fan hail and Led Zeppelin, yeah. he had the wall of fucking Gibsons, oh yeah, just laid out wall of fucking amps and fucking speakers just a rocker from the 70s 80s dude it's so cool and i just hang out with him and get drunk with him and he would just fucking jam fucking toto and fucking van halen like all fucking night yeah. um but i f- i end up they end up accepting me as to like participate and we just did an instrumental it was like me this kid and um i found a bass player and then um my guitar player who adam who we started the septa site with mm-hmm. so we I, I was playing for him with him since high school we played in a band called murder's justice for two years and then we started the septa site in 2008. yeah i didn't have uh i don't know man it was kind of weird so when i first started playing my brother wanted to play drums i have a brother that's two years younger than me so mm-hmm. tyler uh i would take guitar lessons and from the same guy, my brother would get drum lessons. So we started off, I started off playing with a drummer and I, I wanted to be in a band. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't until I met Anthony that uh, we started kind of doing that thing. I kind of needed that push, you know, mm-hmm. it, like learning to play guitar was the same thing. I didn't want to do lessons, you know, it wasn't cool to do lessons. Mm-hmm. It was cool to have long hair and, you know, like get girls or whatever <laughs> you know I, i'm telling you, you know, dude, when you? i first started uh you know today yes i have an awesome girlfriend uh but no back then you know my pimply face and my greasy hair uh-huh. wasn't cool you know no matter how cool my les paul was you know <laughs> but no yeah today it, yeah man i don't know it, it wasn't until anthony that um we started doing the thing i'm not saying that he necessarily pushed me to do it or anything but it, right. it was having the partner to do it you know my brother didn't want to continue playing drums and it was yeah once i found the partner it was a lot easier so what uh but you say you had a vocalist in white vinyl right yeah so so what happened with that i actually i thought you were the vocalist for the band i never got to see you guys play i think i might have heard a track or so like yeah uh, back when you posted tracks were terrible you guys posted something on music punks and i think that was the first time i heard about you guys on music punks and then um I've seen some flyers, and then Brian texted me and sent me a picture. He was watching you, and I took a yeah. picture of you. He was like, dude, this dude has this sick, like, uh, white uh, Jackson. I'm like, that's a Gibson. He's like, no, dude, I think it's a Jackson. I'm like, bro, you got to tell me what's what. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's a fucking it was, Gibson. <laughs> uh, it was uh, one of those um, Warren Cherry uh, mm-hmm. Gibson Flying Vs, yeah. Nice. It was my first Gibson. I, uh, ooh, shit, what did I? I traded a Charvel Sandimas for it. That was when I started getting tired of the glam stuff. Right. <laughs> I got rid of my Charvels and Bob Gibson. But, uh, yeah, no. So people still bring that up to me, which 
you know, in my mind, up until I started Wayward Shot, mm-hmm. nobody knew who White Vinyl, White Vinyl was. was. Like, we, were, like, we were kids, we were losers, whatever, whatever. Uh, you know, individually we were good, but we didn't have, we weren't, you know, that tight band mm-hmm. that, that we're looking for. So I... What yeah. happened to it? How, how, did it, how did it fall uh, apart? A singer moved to L.A., drummer okay. moved away, and it just kind of just it fizzled out. There was a lot of drama in that band. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure you, everybody's been in a band like that where it's like, dude, every time someone says something, it's a fucking fight. <laughs> it, it was that kind of band. And like, no, nah, dude. <laughs> okay. I, um, it was, like, it was like just really? like that. We didn't get along. Um, you know, Anthony and I weren't getting along, and... Y- you know, I, I I'm usually kind of the mediator in all mm-hmm. this stuff in in that band specifically. Everybody was always cool with me, but then me and Anthony were arguing, and it was all because the singer and this whole thing, and we it just it fizzled out. Um, and uh, once that you know that band stopped, it was like I was just waiting to turn 21 because there's no all ages venues like you said. There's nobody mm-hmm. else that's playing. Like when I was in high school, I was the guitarist like all four years. That's it. Yeah, it was crazy. And Again, th- and this is like 2011, 12? No, no uh, a little after that. I graduated in 2019. 2019, okay, fucking wait. Yeah, so 2015, oh, 2019. You're so, you're so young. <laughs> and I, I was the, like, oh, I was the, the guitarist. You were, you know? You're totally, you, how do I put this into words? You're totally on this a space that this scene is being so fucking dead because previous to that, the old ages venues have already died out, yeah. like years before that. So now you're like on this. Nobody's really watching live music. Nobody's yeah. really thinking about starting a band because where are you gonna play? Yeah. And I mean, sure, you can probably play high school in one of those battle of the bands or and whatever. But you know, that's a show a fucking year or two maybe. Yeah, and that's uh, what I did. But Middle there's school. you know, besides of making your own show, which like now as an adult, like we can do that. We're yeah. like fucking, let's go rent a place. We yeah. got the equipment. Let's go do it up. But like when you were a fucking kid in high school, like how do you get motivated to? to be in a band so that you basically didn't have anybody to yeah and if you're losing band members um totally dude like because before that time like back in 2012 to you know 2015 16 even no not 16 before that if you were to post something on music punks i'm looking for a guitar player i'm looking for a bassist mm-hmm. yeah fucking here we go man like what do you want man yeah <laughs> you look lame you look awesome i don't know about you like people be like oh well you know then there's people that just come into troll and then yeah. there's the one like well i've been playing for the two months you're like oh my god dude well i remember when it but at least you could fucking read some comments and be like all right yeah. some people are interested now it's fucking hard dude yeah. hard to find somebody good well that was an experience too so with hunter i recognize hunter and like dude i it's gonna sound stupid, but I look for the long hair. Like it's just, you know. Totally. I, you know, it's, it's not. It's, it's not it's stupid. Kind of. It's the the vibe of the it's, band, and it's just that's for whatever reason that's always been important to me. I think not if I didn't I know Murad, who Murad is, because I know him since he was a little kid, not a little kid, but you know, yeah. Um, yeah. I he he probably would have been the last person who are, would have thought about asking to play for the set side. Yeah. But, but it's it's not stupid, man. Uh, it's because you band for me music or being in a metal band had this image so Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know i'm not gonna get i don't really give a shit who gets offended like i'm not gonna get some fucking overweight dude that's fucking bald and loves metal but uh you know started playing bass six months ago i'm like no man i'm not gonna give you a fucking audition like i have this image of who we want to be and if it's not gonna be that i'm not gonna just settle because we're I'm still gonna be the one getting up on stage and be like, "Well, this is my band. Like, this is what yeah. I fucking." Uh, so it's not dumb. Dude. It's totally a legit point, and it's a good, it's a good uh, strategy to like find musicians. If there was a line, there were a line of musicians to pick yeah. from, right? Yeah. Now it's like, dude, you gotta freaking search. Like Hunter, I knew, I knew about Antigen. I saw Antigen twice. I saw him open up for Dem Bones. Uh, one Halloween, I think, and then mm-hmm. um, I saw him play open for ten years out. Uh, I was there. Yeah, so I knew who Hunter was. I'd never talked to him. Uh, Anthony and I decided, hey, let's try to throw something together. And I was kind of just in and out of it. I I work a lot, um, mm-hmm. and I was not. I, I mean, I was excited about it, but I wasn't super excited about it. I'd been writing all this shit and just recording it like on my Focusrite right there and uh-huh. uh, putting all these demos together. And I was just gonna 
put something out that sounded shitty with my name on it and just be, because I wanted it out there. But we ran into each other at a show. Anthony and I hadn't really hung out or talked for a couple of years. Ran into each other at a show. Uh, when we started looking for a drummer, obviously it was really hard to find one. And I was like, well, there was this fucking dude in Antigen. I don't even know his name. He had long hair. And I pulled up <laughs> Antigen's Instagram and I saw their last post was like seven months ago. And mm-hmm. I was like, that's a really fucking good sign for someone like me looking for a drummer. And Antigen was cool. And I know a, a couple of the guys in there now because yep. they're still friends with Hunter. But uh, we hit up Hunter and found out it, they had, had uh, you know, kind of fit. I don't want to say fizzled out. I don't want to offend anybody, but no. they weren't playing together <laughs> anymore. Mm-hmm. And Hunter was the dude because Hunter had long hair. And then once we jammed right. together, this we is twenty twenty two. Yeah, this is this is. Ooh, yeah, fuck. Because yeah, very I, end of twenty twenty one. Right. And I know that because I played when I was in a band called Rival Dads. Um, we played with Ettingen uh, yeah. in the South Stage at Coots, and talking to the vocalist he was mentioning how that was going to be their last show yeah and we're like damn and actually when our vocalist left from rival dads we were trying to get that guy to yeah. to do it but then it didn't work out but. ian i think is mm-hmm. his name yeah he, nicest dude ever he he'll come he comes to our shows and stuff and i know he can freaking shred and i know he can sing you know eventually i'm sure that he'll freaking be back out here but how'd you how'd you come to that like i've always had an admiration for guitar players who sing because mm-hmm. i can't fucking do it at all yeah like my brain just crashes the, the moment i open my fucking mouth it's like nope <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i i was never a singer uh i never wanted to be a singer i loved playing guitar but things kind of changed for me uh when i was younger it was like dude i would sit and uh, not sit i would stand in my room with my strap and my guitar standing up and just play whatever for four hours straight after school i'd go up for dinner go back down play till i go, went to bed i was just uh, obsessed with the guitar uh, you know, after high school and stuff and after um, white vinyl and, and all that, I, I started to learn to sing because I was like, well, if I'm going to put some shit together uh, and record my own demos and maybe put a band together, mm-hmm. you know, the hardest thing was finding a singer for me because yeah. I was really picky about it. I, I, dude, I'm picky about everything I listen to. But um, I started learning to do it. And what I would do was at the time I was really into Alice in Chains. So I started singing jerry stuff and like nutshell and the easy <laughs> shit and uh easier oh, shit. Called that easy. yeah, easier <laughs> shit um but i would uh record myself i would just drive and sing and i would listen back to it i'm like oh that sounds like shit but i i didn't hate my voice so much mm-hmm. to where i stopped doing it i would just do it every time i drove dude at work i drive a lot for work and i would just fucking do that the whole time and then mm-hmm. Every you know, every time I listened back, it would get a little bit better, a little bit better because I started just listening like what I needed to change. And then, you know, Elon Musk said this thing: you can learn anything you want if you know where to Google. Dude, I just started watching the videos, <laughs> how to sing, how to get right. that you know uh, harsh vocal, all that shit. And I just just did it while I drove, dude. <laughs> like three years of just doing that mm-hmm. and singing in my room, you know, when no one else was home and recording demos and stuff. And then. Just the more you do it, too, the more you rehearse, the stronger your voice gets and the easier So how, how does uh, Hunter actually join joins the band? Uh, I had Anthony hit him up because, like I said, at the time, I was kind of like, eh, do I really want to do this? Do I have time to do it? Not sure yet. Um, hmm. But Anthony hit up Hunter. You don't have time? Why? Because uh, work or what are you doing? Yeah, so uh, I, I work for a property manager, mm-hmm. and I was trying to buy... Roger uh, Bright. Yeah, Roger. <laughs> that, and I was trying to... Uh, purchase uh, uh fourplex and i ended up doing it but i had to work a lot to do it and uh once i bought it i kind of you know i remodeled it did my thing mm-hmm. and uh i moved into it and i had a lot more time on my hands because i wasn't fucking working 80 hours a week trying right. to buy this fourplex uh i did it and then i had a lot more time so and you know obviously i put it into the music and stuff and i should have been doing it the whole time right. honestly because uh, where I was going with the singing thing, uh, well, I guess the Hunter thing, getting Hunter to join the band, we hit him up. Uh, he said, hell yeah. And he said, yeah, n- no, I I'm kind of have... Is he in the thing. Valley? Yeah, Hunter lives in Settlers Bay, really far away. Where is it at? Uh, it's like... Is it in Wasilla? Yeah, it's, it's like beyond Wasilla, 20 minutes. Like past Wasilla? No, not past Wasilla. It's like when you come into like that main intersection, uh-huh. you take a left. Okay. Um I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah, it's, no. it's like 20 minutes outside of the center of Wasilla. Right, it's right, probably, right. I think it's still technically Wasilla. 
but no i think i know what road you're talking about so he lives like 20 minutes out from yeah. that road yeah so up connect goose bay road and then just way fucking out there how the fuck do you guys practice uh well you just drive out to hunter's house or it, sometimes so hunter works in anchorage okay uh, so sometimes we'll just rent a, a studio space uh, that we like and we'll rehearse there before a show we're at um uh over off of spinard that tim felicity I don't know if you... Is that what they do? They rent spaces? Uh, it So it's in the sa- on the same lot as the VFW, I think. Hmm. And it's like the second section, and they turned it into a studio. And the guys record there and rehearse there and stuff. And okay. the VFW, Tim has some sort of involvement in the owning of the VFW. I um, imagine you guys do a lot of uh, just online shit, right? Like if yeah. you write something, you send it to, to Hunter, Hunter practices. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, how we, how we've been writing songs? Is it won't be this way forever. I had a lot of songs that I'd written prior to this band that I wanted to use mm-hmm. uh, in this band that I never used before, and I I created a full demo and sent it out. You know, the drums. You know, it's just bang, 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 and Hunter fucking takes it and makes it. You know, mm-hmm. his way. Same with Anthony on the bass. Sometimes I feel like he's holding back. Hunter. Yeah, I feel like I guess because I've seen him play some covers that requires him like fucking really good drummer drumming yeah uh like when he plays fucking ever long yeah like bro if you can play that i want to hear some of not that but i need to hear more on the drums I, like a little more busy seems like um he's he's you know some drummers like to surf the song and i'm like fuck surf the song dude go nuts man no i, I mean I, hunter's really good at that serving the song like mm-hmm. he does you know i let him he's lose, he's pretty humble when it comes to that shit, and you know, I I, I mean, you'll hear. So we're dropping uh, a full album, just ourselves, obviously. How many songs? Ten, and there's uh, six of the songs haven't come out yet, and there's some freaking pretty nasty ones on there, like Sweet. some heavier shit than we put out yet. Our two heaviest songs haven't haven't come out yet. I we're say, not as heavy as Decepticide, yeah. yeah no, yeah. but I <laughs> no, uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, no, I, I gotta say that when. Um, when Anthony sent me a video of you guys um, play Megadeth, I didn't. I thought that was kind of the the kind of music that Wayward Shot was gonna play because I never heard, you know. And then remember, all I've known of about you is White Vinyl, which what people told me was like Molly Crew, you know, yeah. that kind of rock. And so when he sent me, you guys covering uh, Torment of uh, Torments? Yeah, Tornado. Tornado Soul. Yeah. Um. I was expecting something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, when it came out, I was like, oh, no, this guy's are, like just straight up rock, which is cool. Yeah. But well, I guess like I was expecting for yeah, some reason I had it. It's like, it's coming like fucking so thrash metal. You're yeah, talking, sick. you're talking about Melon when we, when we dropped that. No, that no, no. One. No, the one before that. Uh, no, and you guys have like dropped like songs before, but yeah. I was like, okay, so it's not really like, you know, Megadeth kind of metal. Yeah, no, I mean, I. I'm super into Megadeth. Megadeth's my favorite band. Uh, but I, I really like Alice in Chains, too, and I kind of just mm-hmm. I think we sound a little bit more like that. You know, at least mm. the musical part of it. I can't fucking sing like Lane, unfortunately. Right. But the musical part of it, you know, I think that inspires us more than anything. Is You know, we trying to make the music sound like Alice in Chains. You know, right. like, especially a couple of the songs that are coming out. Um, not quite as sludgy, but, you know. Yeah, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> right on, um, dude. Yeah, no, Hunter. Uh, yeah, we got some shit coming out too, and that's got some really cool drum stuff on it. We just kind of the songs that we put out so far are just you know we we kind of picked the ones that we thought would appeal to the larger audience, you know. Mm-hmm. But there's some pretty fucking niche songs on this thing where Hunter shines, and there's you know one or two songs in particular that Anthony friggin' pops out to. Right on. So um, what wh- wh- what are you guys like trying to do with this band? Um, well, you know, we're before you answer that, like for us, we're all family guys. Yeah. Except Murad. Well, he's he's like our, our child, so yeah. <laughs> well, we adopt him. Oh man, dude, I so, I feel bad for he's, Murad because that's how Anthony talks about me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so much younger. He's our he's our kid. So, um, but you know, we all have kids and um, we have jobs. Yeah. Um. You know, I have like a couple of different businesses outside of my job, but um, so we're not trying to, you know, like 
bro, we're going to make it someday. You yeah. know, we, 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 we took a shot at that back in 2010. And um, we moved to Philadelphia and things were going great. And then we had kids. So we came back and we decided to continue just play music. You know, if we love music, then let's pl keep playing music. You know, we're yeah. all best friends. So why would we stop playing in Decepticide? And that's the only reason Decepticide has been together for now 16 years. Mm -hmm. um, because n all three of us, you know, outside of Murat, obviously, um, we're on the same, same exact page. All three of us, Brian, Ryan, myself, all, all three of us have kids, all three of us have jobs, we have homes that we make a mortgage, and um, that's um, we're happy with that. And getting to play concerts, you know, in front of a lot of people, it's awesome, but because exactly we're so busy with so much stuff, it's like we can't just be doing that and like put in like a lot of effort into advertising yourself, because like, you know, we've been, to, we've been around for so long, just like, Bro, if you don't know the septic I, <laughs> I don't know what else can I do, man. Yeah. Like at, at this point, it's been 16 years of, of promoting myself. So, yeah. but we're not trying to go anywhere. So what's, what is way we're shot trying to do? Um, yeah, we would like to. Because it's okay to just play music. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, you know whatever happens we're probably still going to play music and maybe it won't be wayward shot but mm. I, I think we're all still going to play music but no we would like to i'm never going to leave alaska i'm never going to move out of alaska but i would love to play some shows really? down in the states yeah i don't think i would you just love it here yeah i tried i i moved to seattle for three months well try to play music there I mean, and, but it wasn't do it. <laughs> it wasn't because i hated seattle it was because i missed home yeah. that much um yeah We'd like to go play some shows down in the States. Yeah, do yeah. some stuff. Freaking sign our name. That's Have good. someone steal all of our money, you know? Yeah. That's the dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally, man. Yeah, I mean, Hunter, Hunter's got a kid. That's funny. Uh, that's that's kind of where we are, too. Like, we're always yeah. not leaving. We got too much shit here. But, like, totally. I think that's... Um, after everything that we've mm -hmm. done, right now, that's a good goal to just go on a, uh, on a week tour. We can all afford it. Just go yeah. have fun. Not trying to make money. Not trying to get signed just yeah just have a good time. well i mean we would sign i mean i'm i'm we definitely would like we, we would love to play music as a career you know i mean it's obviously not an option for everybody and mm -hmm. one day i'll have kids one day i'm sure anthony will hunter's got a boy the freaking coolest little kid out there anthony has kids no hunter does uh, hunter does yeah. yeah can you imagine anthony having a kid uh -huh. <laughs> he'd be running around shirtless at the step side <laughs> shows too that fucking no, uh, uh, I'm of the opinion that everybody should have a kid if they want their life to improve. But oh yeah, no, I I totally agree with you. I don't have a kid, so I can't speak from experience. But no, I uh, I agree. I played in a worship band for six years. Really playing guitar? Yeah, I. You still do? Uh, no, I don't anymore. Uh, the opportunity that I had at the church I was playing at uh, went away. We'll say. Oh. <laughs> to put it Did uh, they? politely. Well, what happened? Uh, <laughs> I've got some friends from there that I'll. Uh, it's it's just us watches. here, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, we'll just say that uh, the pastor of that church made some poor choices with women. Oh. He was an older fella too. Well, you know. I mean, shit. I, I don't really mind if he sees this. It's pretty fucking crazy. Um, I I don't know the whole story, but he was not being uh, completely faithful uh, to his wife, and. Uh, then things just started changing there. I wasn't fired or anything, but I just left because it wasn't fun for me anymore. I left playing there. Um, but no, no, that's the reason I brought that up was I totally agree. I and think everybody should have a kid. <laughs> you didn't try to like go to a different church or like play somewhere else? Um, no, I auditioned at Change... Chain, uh, ugh, sorry, I auditioned Change with Changepoint. Mm -hmm. um, I sent them in my tape and everything, and... They said, yeah, they'd love to have me come play. But then at that point, that was like right when Wayward Shot was kicking off. And, oh, okay. you know, my time was I, getting yeah, short. Yeah, I used so. to. And every now and then I go to FCC. I went to Changepoint once. My buddies <laughs> invited me. And I thought it was too too much. It was a little too much. And there's, I, I don't like churches that are too... There are big buildings, <laughs> like, yeah. and, and it just looks like a lot of money moves around here. I'm like, yeah, that's why I like FCC. It's just like a really smaller, just really more humble. Yeah, and uh, I almost ended up playing bass there, but um, I got busy. But yeah, I, I wish I would have done it. Yeah, no, I mean, I did it for six years, and it's like we weren't playing metal, but they kind of let me. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, well, they they totally let me like 
play some you know cool leads and stuff too and it was it was like it was nice you know alternative rock type stuff and yeah. i had some distorted leads and stuff but it was completely one of the most valuable things i could have ever done because for six years i was playing on stage in front of people mm-hmm every single week I, I wasn't on a rotation i was the guitarist mm-hmm. for six years that sophomore year through you know a year and a half ago well, what um, is your first show first time that you step on step on the stage and yeah if, if we're talking first time i stepped on a stage and like there like, was a lot of people well i i played a talent show in eighth grade and we played enter sandman with my band robot jellyfish nice. and I, I was i was gonna say too uh i knew that you were from columbia because my best friend in middle school who was in that band with me his name is samuel he was from columbia too and you guys have the same exact accent and everything <laughs> well he was actually born in venezuela but he grew up in columbia nice but uh he was and, in that and band you just with me. you just knew it by what like the way i talk or the yeah. way I, yeah really yeah i was gonna ask you if you were from columbia or venezuela because i just <laughs> i i just recognized it from his voice but uh I mean, the first time we uh played on stage it was him and i and a couple other buddies playing to the whole school you know it was during school this wasn't an after school thing and they put us in front of the whole school seventh eighth grade at mirrors we played enter sandman <laughs> was, you know i'd freaking butchered that solo but nobody cared you know <laughs> that was uh, yeah eighth grade but no the first time like i i consider my first time really hitting the stage was mm-hmm. uh white vinyl did battle of the bands first show was or the first night was acw Mm-hmm. So my first time really hitting the stage playing my own music. Was ACW, ACW was still open back then? Yeah, 2018. 2018. Hmm. Um, and it was one of the very last shows. Okay, then. yeah, because I, f- I felt like uh, before it closed, before it closed down, we, we already haven't been there for, for a while. Uh, yeah. I think the last show that we played there, we opened for Suicide Silence. And that must have been 2000, gosh, dude, 12 or 13. Yeah. And... uh yeah it was kind of dying down like the whole like all ages that was the other thing i mean we kind of like blame it on the venue not being there but Mm -hmm. i remember the last couple all ages shows and they were very thin like not a lot of people were showing up also that's a terrible location you know (laughs) all the way down to the tracks yeah exactly (laughs) yeah i think we played the second to last show there and it was the battle of the band so it was pretty packed you know those people wanted their friends yeah. cheering for them and stuff and it was it was packed did you guys uh lose that night or did you pass the next round or? yeah we we passed to the next round and then we lost to uh and was was that a coots the finals yep. that? yeah we lost in the finals to uh who played City ashes oh City ashes was still playing really yeah. yeah i don't know i don't know what ended up happen- happening after that because like i said i was i was 17 at that time i saw the ad on facebook or instagram or whatever we went and played it i was not in the scene that was my first time ever seeing city and ashes that Mm -hmm. was the that was the time so what happened was we lost or got second place or whatever it was it doesn't matter um but they asked us to go up and you know oh do you guys have 45 minutes worth of material you know the battle's over you Mm -hmm. want to play and we're like fuck yeah we went up and played and that's when uh the first time i met brian brian was there and i was yeah 17 he's like oh stop playing that volbeat song it doesn't fit with your set and Back then, we were like, oh, man, who is this guy? What's Decepticide? Because I mean, even Anthony, he wasn't 21. Mm-hmm. You know, He was 20. It was our first time in Coots, and it was like, you know, we, we knew what Coots was, you know? Right. We'd never been inside. Oh, we are like, gosh. oh, man, who's this guy? And then, shit, now that I'm a little bit older, I look back on that, and I was like, oh, yeah, he was, uh, Brian was having my back. He was fucking, he was right. <laughs> right. Because, you know, we, we played, you know, SOS Motley Crue is different than what we play now. We played Round and Round by Rat and all that shit. And then we threw in a Volbeat song, you know? Yeah. It was wrong. It was wrong. Yeah, yeah. You threw some like commercial fucking radio yeah. fucking songs. Like. Should have never done that. Brian was right. <laughs> I don't even, I doubt he even remembers that. You were I right, Brian. Does. You were right. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. I'd, I'd, I'd be surprised if he remembers that. But Oh, he remembers. Uh, <clears throat> I just remember that he texted me. And uh, I had already heard about you guys just online, just like from music punks and like yeah. seen a couple couple so clips, big mouths and all that. We had, yeah. Well, <laughs> and no, that was that was after. I think it was after. I think you uh, you when you were looking for members. Yeah. And um, that was at the beginning, I think. But I don't right. know. Bet you anything. If I go through oh. my conversation with the band, I, I'll find it. Oh, it's all <laughs> cringy stuff, you know. 
But I, I love that explanation because you took it from like Molly Crew when they were looking for members. Yeah, it was like, it's gotta be badass. You gotta have long hair. You gotta give no fucks. You gotta shred and scream like a maniac, you know? All that stupid stuff, even though we're standing there with our friggin' polo shirts and we're still <laughs> growing our hair out because we just started liking rock and roll, you know? Right. Never played a show. And you gotta be Eddie Van Halen if you wanna join the band, you know? Right on, dude. Well, we got a fucking show coming up um, yeah. next Saturday, Palmer. Um, yeah, man. Pretty excited to, the, to fucking do that, man. It's gonna be awesome. For us, we we've been we've been waiting for your call. <laughs> well, Anthony, I know, dude. I know. For like a, a year and a half, Anthony is like, "Hey, man, fucking let's play a show together." I'm like, "It's not you. It's not you. It's me. <laughs> it's the fact that we are older." and what i was talking about how we're busy with family and all that and also because the way the scene is now we can't just like have a show every other not even every other month yeah uh, um, no yeah yeah we we understand that now we didn't understand that at first but we when 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 we put on the show mm -hmm. we're going like three three to five three yeah. to five months yeah so we're really only playing maybe four times a year yeah. a whole year and um you know, we yeah, we stick with our genre and like if we have our bodies like you know we we play our last like four concerts have been with Heal, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, those are our roommates. So another thing that we're kind of complicated is all our gear. We like to play on our own stuff, and uh, we understand that like you know just like every most shows, everybody's like, well, we're everybody's playing through the same drum set you know it's like yeah. for drummers that has to be a fucking nightmare dude that's if that's if i was to tell you like hey man everybody's playing through this fucking yamaha fucking stratocaster yeah. <laughs> sorry dude it's yeah. a guitar of the night yeah. and you go like and let's say you are used to having a fucking floyd rose dude you're yeah. like what the fuck dude it's like half of my shit's gone um hey man we're, everybody's playing through this combo amp sorry yeah so in the septa side we don't do that um mm -hmm also brian is very fucking good on his drum set mm -hmm. a lot of times like it's the fact that you know a lot of some there's some bands that just like to spend the minimum on fucking equipment oh, yeah. and then they're like oh yeah i'll donate my fucking drum set for the whole night and then you go and sit on that shit yeah. and it's like this oh, is yeah. a fucking toy. Believe like, me, we're not that way. You know hunter no, I, dude he sits with his drum set and his no, microscope I, no i know i know you guys are not but <laughs> what i was getting is that the few shows that we play we are so demanding on like having our stuff that we understand that like a lot of bands are going to be like well we want to bring our stuff also and then we'd be like well too fucking bad um you either play on our drum set or it's cool we don't have to yeah. play together and so the last year we have played with basically the same band or two because they are friends of ours they know brian and they have played through his drum set so they're cool with just jumping on his kit and just arranging it a little bit but go for go from there and when they're done we get to play with our stuff and um you know we're at a point where like not to sound like fucking diva but it's like hey man you want the septicide this is the septicide every fucking cave every cable that goes to my guitar is part of, like it has to be there and so yeah we need to play with bands that are willing to cater to that it's yeah. like hey you guys can either play through our drum set or if you're cool with that hey man go ahead and, f and sit up in front of us which yeah. is what what we're doing this yeah. saturday we're gonna cool. sit up and you guys are just gonna sit in front because i know hunter also likes to play with his shit. yeah and he's got a really nice yeah. stuff but and i know brian could not jump on drum uh, hunter stuff because we play with double kicks yeah and yeah i mean he's got things. a double kick but he doesn't have the two uh bass drums hunter mm -hmm. hunter likes his uh, i'm not a drummer never been a drummer never will be but when i look at hunter's kit it's like really compact and it's just you know the same thing like you know i i like my evh i don't like playing through a marshall but yeah you like you said earlier you guys have been around for 16 years and we understand that if you said play in our kit you know put your head on my amp you know which i mean i'll do it if you want me to um, well no i was we're, you, know, we're you can it. sit in front of us or you can plug into our caps yeah. so obviously the caps caps are different it's like hey man fucking yeah. everybody i'm cool with anybody plug into my cap no. obviously yeah. don't plug into my amp <laughs> no we we've we're still a long way away we're paying our dues and everything and we understand that you guys are you know we're coming into your house and right you know playing 
yeah and what that, you guys that's kind of why like you almost sometimes hesitant to like you know ask a band to like open for us or play with us because when we say those kind of things they're like oh fuck dude like we play shows with other bands and fucking everybody plays with the same shit and whatever like why why are we making it so complicated and like you've been to one of our shows right like yeah. one or two maybe yeah it's like that's our signature sound dude and he has to fucking be there we can't just like not only that but like there's the other side of like well we can't share absolutely everything because um we're not just gonna let you sound like the septicide <laughs> you yeah. know on oh, our yeah. gear <laughs> so yeah. like yeah well you can play to our cast but not to our fucking amps yeah. neither use our triggers or anything on a drum set yeah. so you know it's kind of one of those kind of it's a little touchy for some people but for us and that's what like i don't know if you notice online sometimes we had a little hate on the fucking yeah I music saw that punks on and music punks i'm no yeah comment. so you know no comment that's that's what i do just gatekeep <laughs> yeah, yeah gatekeeper <laughs> just just a gatekeeper um, no i mean like we said at the beginning i i uh this is our first time really meeting and like uh, dude i i'm gonna be honest you know i mean i obviously i had no real negative opinions but i'm just looking at the music punks thing i know who decepticide is i'm like you know what's up with this enzo guy like why is everybody freaking <laughs> hating on him and i was like you know curious but then you know you guys asked us to play this show so I, i'm sure you guys felt the same way at the beginning you so much feel for like, gatekeeping <laughs> yeah you feel you feel like everybody's like against you you know when it's not true you just mm -hmm. sort of like oh man so and so we didn't get this thing that we were supposed to open for you know what's going on but no you guys reached out and we friggin we were happy we're so i mean we are happy and we're excited yeah i appreciate it man it comes with the territory and like the longer you're in this scene you'll see how fucking petty can be um it just um it's what's funny is that 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 guy had such a good recollection of like every detail of what happened and i had to kind of like pull it out of my the back of my head i'm like i think this is what happened you know mm -hmm. but people get this uh impression that you know that we're kind of hard to work with or whatever but it's like no man you know what we have raised so many bands that were coming up that we thought were awesome either because their music was awesome or they were awesome people we're like dude let's play a show with them even if yeah. they're non-metal we have done that for so many bands and mm -hmm. i can't tell you and i'm not gonna mention anybody how so many of those same bands that we help fucking race and we help like you know you know we basically we share our crowd with yeah. them it's like here enjoy oh, yeah. all these people that came That's, to see us yeah and you're welcome but we're happy to do it man because like i love fucking music and i love the music scene um and i want this music scene to be better and to be diverse um these are the kind of shows that i like i don't it's not that i don't like fucking straight up metal shows but i come from a scene that you didn't know you know there was no facebook or anything like that there was barely myspace which is this is way before your time yeah. and um i come from a, a scene where you just showed up to the venue you just knew that they had shows every saturday friday and saturday and you would just show up to one of them and unless you were walking around downtown and you saw flyers like old school flyers like on the mm -hmm. fucking corners and shit like that the music stores cafes whatever uh you really didn't know who was playing and <coughs> when i was new to the scene i would just go to fucking shows and take a chance because i was hoping to see a metal band but then i would run into a bunch of fucking bands that i was like they're fucking awesome dude like who are these guys and you start fucking remember them and then you start coming keep coming to the shows and then the same band shows up the next month you're like oh that was the band from fucking last month yeah. and you fucking you just open up to like more music than just metal but yes i was going to just look for metal because there was no there was no yeah. social media so you just basically took a chance well now everybody you know everybody knows what's happening fucking a yeah. year in advance like fucking yeah. pantera is playing in fucking like in june of fucking yeah. 2025 yeah but and i mean there's a yeah there i mean there's stuff to be said about that too because the only way that people know when we're playing especially if we're headlining which you know we're pretty new we haven't done it that many times dude we're spending shitload of money on instagram to freaking mm -hmm. boost these things you know it'd be way easier if you go you know i don't want to say easier because i ha i haven't been there but you know when you slap a flyer somewhere 
where people are going looking for them and 50 people are going to see that flyer and 20 of them are going to show up. It's Instagram. You're sending it out there and you're paying for, Mm -hmm. you know, 5,000 people to see it and two of them want to come because they're you're not they're not looking for it you know that and and you're not really in control of who sees that exactly and, and where where it goes the you, algorithm you just pay it to the algorithm the algorithm thinks they're showing it to the right people and maybe a lot of times but a lot of other times you just don't get anything so um but but still um point is that you know this kind of concerts with um, a band like yours and and the um that's what I used to fucking love about the music scene, but this, I, I, I mean, I'm now talking like way before you're, God damn it, dude, way before you were even anything, dude, like just fucking child. Yeah. I mean, to me, the best fucking years of the music scene is like 2007, dude. <laughs> 2007, 2008. So I was born in 2000, so if you say 2008, I'm eight. <laughs> oh, God, dude. Uh, 2008, yeah. I met Ryan, dude. Like, yeah. no, 2007, I met Ryan uh, in november september and then january 2008 we started the septicide we we named ryan our vocalist and uh just a new year's eve party and he would not fucking shut up about joining our band i'm like dude speaking of ryan dude that dude can fucking i'll say sing but dude he's got a fucking crazy awesome voice i've been listening to your guys shit i've been listening to savage i know i don't i mean so, uh, so Savage is basically a compilation so, of all yeah, our exactly. EPs. I wasn't going to call it an album, but because yeah. uh, I, I saw when you guys posted, I read it. I've listened to it like five times. I like that 15 kills. The you know, that's, uh, but, thanks, dude. That's my hmm. first song that I ever wrote guitar-wise and wrote lyric-wise. Yeah. It's the only song I've ever written. And that's when Ryan joined the band, that's the first song that we had. And I showed it to Ryan. I'm like, all right, dude, like, I'm going to play this riff. And I just wanted you to open it up with a nice fucking high pitch scream. Yeah. And then here comes the verse. And like these, I, like, I wrote these lyrics and just sing it like this. Yeah. That was the only song I ever written uh, as far as like completely beginning to end guitars and, and vocalists. Yeah. Um, that was a song that I wrote on the previous band. But we never even got to practice it. Like I started writing the riff for it. And at the time, we were breaking up with, the, with our vocalists at the time. And uh, that's when we started auditioning for vocal- vocalists, and um, we started the Septic Sign. That was the like, very first song we we ever uh, yeah. we ever started practicing. Well, I saw uh, I heard you saying um, that you're you you know if you had to break it down to recording or playing live, you you like playing live. Like that's that's your thing. You know, I heard you saying, you "Oh, record. I don't I, I don't recording. like recording because it, it never comes out the way that I that you want it." You know, mm-hmm. I'm the opposite. I fucking love being in the studio. I just, I like the mm-hmm. art of the creating. And I, I love being on stage too. And, and right. I mean, I don't know if, if you've seen us yet, but, um, we, you know, we've kind of changed up our uh, our shows a little bit. And we'll have, we'll bring, we'll bring some energy. Hopefully get them ready for you. No, uh, I haven't seen, I haven't seen you guys play. I mean, you guys haven't played that much. And again, yeah. just with, with me, like I have um, every other weekend, like free because, yeah. The other weeks, like my kids are here, so like we're obviously gotcha. can't yeah. can't go to fucking coots. <laughs> yeah. But I think they're gonna be at our show. Awesome. I told Aaron like, hey, I got my kids, so I don't. He didn't yeah. say anything, so I was like, all right, well, they're gonna be there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, dude, I I don't know. I, I like your guys' stuff, uh, the recording too, and I, I've seen you guys live a handful of times. But like I said, I've only been twenty one for a couple of years, and you guys don't play that many shows, you know? No, no. Uh, like I was saying, we you know. The older we get, the, the no least appealing is just more like, you know, we have this fan base that we have seen it to where yeah. we play. And like, if we play the next month, it's like half of the crowd because like they just saw us. So yeah. this one should be pretty good because it's been four months since our last show. Yeah, I saw, I was at your last show, the Carousel show, right? Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. We had, uh, I can't remember who it was that was opening. It was uh, Vel Morvidity. They opened yeah. up, and then a heel closed the show for us. And again, like you see, a heel again. Like those are our guys. Yeah, um, man. Shit, I'm not like, I'm not, not really like the stay out super late kind of guy. Like mm-hmm. I don't, you know, I don't party too hard. And I, shit, I think I stayed through your guys' set, and I didn't, I didn't stay for heel. But I did see heel uh, with you guys at Willow a few shows ago. Right, right. That was a good one. Yeah, uh, that bouncer and you. <laughs> He didn't. He didn't like those guys on the gate. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's like, what? What do you want me to do, man? Like, I'm not gonna tell. God 
yeah. like when you're on stage man and you see chaos you don't worry about like yeah. are they gonna be okay is the venue gonna be okay you're like fuck yeah dude yeah. this is it man this yeah. is this is fucking this is it maybe maybe saturday is going to be our first mosh pit i've never had one yet it's usually a lot of, a lot of this you know <laughs> especially when we bust out the rat don't worry we won't bust out any rat at this show you fucking better dude you fucking better because ryan will love you forever if you play fucking rat uh no we have some cool stuff um I'll, I'll mostly what, what about like mega this cover yeah maybe dude you should so oh uh, yeah yeah okay yeah we're gonna do tornado because I, I know nice. nobody will see this before then <laughs> before that show <laughs> no yeah this won't come out to you yeah we we like we play tornado that's kind of like our big that's our big cover you know it's like mm -hmm. right in this sweet spot of the set and people um, man i don't know what it is about the writing but people who don't like megadeth dude that's the song that they, they the people don't even know the song they mm -hmm. just assume it's an original of ours and they just go crazy during that one we have one other song that's an original that people just freaking like really feel that one too nice. and we got we got our set kind of lined up for your crowd specifically you know we kind of move some stuff around you know <laughs> You know, we 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 go um some highs. Oh, and a couple of breakdowns, a couple yeah, yeah. chuck chucks. Yeah, we 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 pulled out a couple <laughs> songs. You know, a couple of the softer ones because you know we just want to fucking punch everybody in the face. You know? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Let's do it, man. Yeah. Fucking it, man. Well, thanks for calling, man. Yeah. And everybody listening, watching, appreciate it. Support uh my friend here. Yeah. Wayward shot. Oh, Wait, do, I, do I plug it now? Plug, Wayward plug it in, shot bro. official on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I said. Don't watch. Don't subscribe. That shit doesn't work. All right. Thank you, man. Sweet, man. That's good. Yeah, dude, I've never done... I mean, I was on... Well, I was on my bottom, I went on Casey.